Okay, so uh, because this didn't work perfectly yesterday, I thought I'd just record this and then we can uh, do the rest of the lesson together. So, um, further differentials. So we're going to look at some further differentials, um, recap on stationary points, and then start thinking about second derivatives today. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I just draw um, a function, and I go for f of x equals something nice and simple, so let's say just... Um, x to the power of 5, for example. So we can write this in two ways. We can write f of x, or we can write y. Um, and I'll continue the notation as we go down. So if I find the first differential of this, which would be f dashed x, or it would be d by dx of y, which we might also write as dy by dx, I can just use my power rule, drop the 5 down, and that gives me 5x to the power of 4. So this is my first differential. Now, for what we've been using so far, this has been used as a gradient function, but it could be used for something else. Um, when we're just plainly looking at graphs, this is the gradient function. So the second differential would be f double dashed x, sometimes known as double prime, and this would be dx, sorry, d by dx of d by dx of y. Okay, so I'm differentiating my differentiated version of y. Now this would give me, as I said yesterday, d squared y over dx squared, which is a bit of a weird notation, but it's just the way it is. Okay, things will always be the same. We have d squared y not dy squared. That should make sense that the y is not squared if you have a look. Um, but it's just weird that this d isn't squared. Anyway, we can't change it. This gives us 20x to the power of 3, because I've used my power rule again. And this is my second differential. Okay, so I suppose you could consider this to be the gradient of the gradient function, as in what is the rate of change of gradient? I'm going to keep going with this. We could have f3. Sorry, that is the wrong notation. f triple prime uh, x. Um, and this again would give me d by dx of d by dx of d by dx of y. Which we've got enough brackets. One more. Okay, but easier than this nonsense, let's just write d cubed y over dx cubed. And again, use my power rule, 20 times 3 is 60, 60x squared. And you can imagine I can keep going with this on and on and on and on. That's my third differential. Which doesn't have an awful lot of use. Uh, in year two, you might use it on some graphs, but very rarely. And obviously I keep going. If I just took this part, I'll go 120x. That would then become 120. And then at that point, we stop because we have no variable left. Okay? As soon as we've got to uh, x to the power of 1, it goes because, if you remember, x to the power of 0 equals Okay, so that's a brief introduction, thinking about further differentials. Uh, all we're really going to use um, today is this one, this one, and this one. We don't need to worry about the rest of it. Right, so I'm going to get rid of this. You don't really need to get all that written down. Just a brief understanding that differentials can keep going. As long as there's still a variable to differentiate, i.e. as long as there's still an x, I can keep differentiating. Okay, let's have a little think. It's going to be a better way of doing this, surely. Ah, the lasso. Whoa. Oh, fantastic. Right. <clears throat> now, yesterday we looked briefly at stationary points. So let's have a little think about uh, stationary points again. And let's definitely not go with green. That's a horrible colour choice. So our stationary points yesterday, well, we looked yesterday at increasing and decreasing functions. So as a brief recap, if my differential of x or my dy by dx 
If that is greater than or equal to zero, if you remember, this gives me a point on the graph uh, and it shows that because it's positive, I have an increasing function. If I have f prime x, which is again equal to uh, dy by dx, uh, is less than or equal to zero, I have a decreasing function. So in this case, uh, my points either side are going to decrease. Okay, so to the left of it is higher than to the right of it, and vice versa. That's obvious. Now those two, we can keep practicing these. Um, I suggest you do some questions yourself um, in your own time. Awful use of an apostrophe there, but get over it. Um, and you know, have a look at increasing and decreasing functions. Where things get a little bit more interesting is when I have my stationary point, which is where it equals zero. Okay, and this can mean a number of things. This can either mean we are at a minimum, or it can mean I'm at a maximum, or it can mean I'm at something called a point of inflection. Now, point of inflection, you've seen points of inflection before when you've seen the graph of tan. Oh, I do hope my computer doesn't explode. Why are you making that noise? So graph of tan has lots of points of inflection. It basically means it kind of changes direction, but it's a kind of kink in the graph. Now, the thing about this, when we have um, equaling zero, we don't actually know whether it's going to be a minimum or a maximum or a point of inflection. Whereas with these two, the first two, we knew what they were going to be. So for this, we need to have a bit more of a kind of robust method as to um, how we're going to work out what's actually going on. So we need to... We can use two methods for this. One method we can use is we can basically go either side. So we can go either side of the point. By this I mean, well, let's choose our point here and let's choose a point a little bit to, to the right and a little bit to the left and see what they do. Um, now there's a good example of this in the textbook. I'm gonna absolutely butcher it here for you, which is, you know, my pleasure. Um, if I go to the left, in this case, I get a value that's higher. In fact, I'm going to redraw this because that is a rubbish diagram. There we go. So here's my value here. Now, if I go to the right of it and to the left of it, and you notice that both values are actually higher than the original, then we can sort of see, can't we, that this must be at the bottom of a, um, a trough in a way. Okay, so look either side of the point. Equally, if I look at one going the other way, I might find, okay, well, both of these points are actually lower in value than this one, therefore I'm at a peak. So that's all right, but, uh, you know, we can do better. Okay, so we're going to use calculus to do this instead. So I'm going to get the old lasso tool out. So here's your warning. I'm going to get rid of everything. Here we go. What's exciting? That's not what I wanted. There we go. Whee. This might delete my title, in which case I'll be very upset. There we go. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Myro, um, which is a free bit of software you can use to uh, share a white ball with your friends. I don't know if you guys get up to the weekend, but you can do some maths together. Isn't that fun? So, if we have this condition, f prime x or dy by dx and it equals zero I want to use calculus to decide is it a max is it a min or is it a point of inflection okay or a prisoner of inflection, whichever you want to look at it. So, how am I going to use calculus? Calculus. Well, the way I use calculus to do this is essentially I differentiate it again, okay, um, using the values I've got 
and I do that to find whether it's a maximum or minimum. So we're going to go through an example, um, and here we go. So I'm going to give you a function, and what we're going to do is we're going to decide whether it has turning points, uh, where they are, and we're going to decide whether they are maximums or minimums. So here's the graph we're going to use, and I'm going to show you this graph. It's here. Uh, it's the graph of x minus 2, x minus 4, x plus 1. So it's a, a cubic graph, okay, and we can see it's definitely got two localised um, maximums or minimums. The reason I say localised is because actually this graph goes upwards forever and downwards forever. So we're talking about local minimums and maximums, okay, a couple of peaks and troughs as it goes. If I zoomed out really far from this, it's just going to look like a straight line, okay, so the local max and min. So my function then is, as I've just shown you, x minus 2, x minus 4, and x plus 1, okay, and what I'm going to do to start with um, is actually tell you what I'm going to use y notation just for a change. I'm going to expand this out. Uh, I'm going to do it really quickly because I'm unbelievably good at maths. Look at this x cubed uh, minus 5x squared, I reckon. Hmm, let me think. I feel like it's 2x and then plus 8. There we go. That's my expanded version. So that's my graph. Um, we know what it looks like because when it's factorised, we get three nice little points. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate it. And to do this, uh, I'm just going to use my power rule. So 3x squared minus 5 times 2. So 10x uh, plus 2. Sorry, 8. You haven't got an x term, so you disappeared. Now, this is my gradient function. So if I go back to my graph, here it is. Okay, there's my gradient function. And a couple of things to notice. You'll see that where this graph has a peak, as in here, that's going to line up with where this graph goes through the x-axis. Okay, as in the gradient is zero, so it goes through at zero. And the same is going to happen over here. Zero, zero. Okay, cool. Now, the next thing to do, if I go back here, is I want to know what those points are. So the points I'm aiming for are here, pretty ugly numbers, but let's make sure we can find them. So I just need to solve this, okay? So I need to set this equal to zero because when dy by uh, dx equals zero, that is where I have a stationary point. I don't know why I've got a little Mickey Mouse hand here now. Let's get that back to a pen. No? Okay, fine. So we do 3x squared minus 10x plus 2 equals 0. Now, you can solve this however you want. I, I went to the trouble of solving it using completing the square um, because I forgot my class whiz. Um, but whichever way you do it, you can use uh, completing the square, it's a bit hectic doing it that way. You can just use a uh, quadratic formula, or you can just bring it into your calculator at this stage and see what you get. But if you do that, when you solve it, you should find the solutions of um, about 3.119, and the other solution is uh, still positive, uh, 0 0.2139. Okay, so those are my two points at which I have a turning point, so let's just verify those. So here we go, 0 0.214, perfect, and 3.12. Okay, so we can see that this one is a maximum, and this one's a minimum. So to show this, or to prove it, what I need to do, oops, it's going to move this up. How do I do that? Ah, there we go. Um, so to do that, I need to differentiate this a second time. So I need to find d2y by dx squared. So to do this, take your 3x squared, turn that into 6x, take your 10x, that's going to become minus 10. So here's my second um, differential. And I'm going to use this to decide whether I've got a maximum or a minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'll take this, 
if the second differential is positive, then it is a minimum. Okay, if the second differential is negative, it is a maximum. Why can't I spell? Right, let's have a look at this on the graph. So, let's put in the second derivative. There it is, a nice straight line. Now, for this one, we have a minimum here. Let's have a look. Our gradient is zero. What's our second derivative doing? Well, our second derivative is positive. Look. Okay, so when the second derivative is positive, our stationary point is a minimum. Okay, hopefully you can see that checks out. And where our second derivative, remember this one is our second derivative, where this one is negative, which is here, we get a maximum. So let's have a look. So that's our stationary point. If you look down, this green line is negative. Okay, so that works. So this rule holds. Okay, so you need to be careful with this. And make sure you are happy with that. So all I need to do now is I just need to take my two points and substitute them in. So the first one, if I put 6 multiplied by 3.119 dot, 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 uh, minus 10, see what that gives me. Well, actually, you can kind of do this roughly. You can use your calculator, but I'm just going to do this by eye because, look, three, 6 times 3 is about 18, so it's about 18 point something, take away 10. Well, that's going to give me about 8-ish, right? So therefore, that one is positive, so this must be a minimum. So we should have a minimum at 3.119. Good. And I'm going to do the same for the other point. So d2y dx squared equals 6 times the small number 0 0.2139 minus 10. Again, I can kind of just eyeball this because look, 6 times 0 0.2, ugh, that's going to be a small number. Um, I don't know what it's going to be, 20% of it? 1.2-ish? Minus 10, well it's definitely going to be negative. Okay, again, put it on your calculator to show you have a negative value, but because this one's negative, we know it must be a maximum. Okay, let's go back to our graph. So this point there, that's the point I put in, and it is a maximum. Okie dokes. Now, the last thing that might happen is that if you put in uh, one of these values and you get zero, okay, so if you get d2y by dx squared and that gives you zero, then don't panic. You may have stumbled across a point of inflection. And the best thing to do here is to check with values, okay, either side of it to see if it is a point of inflection. If you find one, it's very exciting. Uh, you actually get a special prize from the um, from the Institute of Maths. Um, it's a bit like finding a rare Pokemon, but um, you might find one, and there might be one with a question like this in the textbook. Okay, dokes, so that is a brief kind of introduction to how we use this. If I just scroll back up, I'll go through a question again briefly. We want to find the um, stationary points, so I differentiate, set it equal to zero and solve. Okay, so that's getting me to here. Expand, differentiate, solve, that gets you stationary points. We then must determine the nature of our stationary points, okay, by differentiating again, using this rule here, okay, Bung in the values in. If it's positive, that gives me a minimum. Negative gives me a maximum. Okay, if it's zero, it gives you a point of inflection, potentially. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're going to crack on with some questions, um, and then I'll be back in real life on your screens. How exciting. Anyway, there you go.